सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली and this is what has come to pass we in this episode of macro sutra we're going to be analyzing the latest retail inflation data for india and and the us as well because that does have some sort of impact on india even if it's indirect and so i'm tca sharad raghavan deputy editor at the print and we have with us radhika pande associate professor at nipfp thank you so much radhika for thank joining you, us thank you sharad So uh, as I mentioned in the introduction uh, food inflation has risen yeah. but first could you tell us a little bit about just the main inflation numbers in right. India and the US how have they moved Yeah so CPI inflation mm -hmm. India CPI inflation has uh, risen from 4.3% to 4.8% uh, from May jump. to June yeah it's a big jump and it's 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 uh, mostly contributed by uh, food inflation and we can talk about the dynamics so it's it's mainly a food story right. while other components stay elevated like core inflation is still above 5% but we don't see much movement there it's mm. the main movement or the main story uh, the dynamic mix that are playing out are mainly seen in the various uh, components of food inflation right. so that is uh, what has driven the surge in uh, the overall india's retail uh, inflation and when we look at uh, us uh, cpi inflation it has come at uh, 3% right uh, <clears throat> if we look at the year on year change in uh, june as compared to the june of last year uh, but when we strip off the uh, food and energy components and when we look at the core uh, us cpi it has come in at 4.8% so those oh, other those, those still remain elevated because we know that the, in the us the inflation target is 2% and uh, when the federal open markets committee which is their um, body which decides the policy rate right. it not only looks at the retail cpi it also looks at the core cpi and core cpi is uh, elevated due to a number of factors i mean it's mainly driven by the shelter prices there at this point in time okay so uh, that has driven that has led to though there has been a uh, material decline in the overall cpi because we've talked about us cpi when it was around 8 to 9% mm -hmm. during this time last year right but now it has uh, uh, come down uh, but more needs to be done because it's still above the uh, inflation target of 2% right so uh, so basically in short uh, inflation in india has jumped yes and it's mostly been driven by food, food. inflation yes inflation in the us has fallen Eased. but yeah. it is still above target yeah that's in a nutshell yes right Absolutely. and so now let's uh, stick with india for yes. for a bit within food inflation one one question is within food inflation what is happening yes. as you said that there were some right. dynamics yes and the second is should we still be concerned that core inflation is still above 5% and that it's it's not changing means that it's also not coming down yeah so let's talk about food inflation first so right. in food inflation you have many components like uh, cereal mm -hmm. you have pulses uh, vegetables fruits the protein rich the items like egg fish meat right. and you have spices so these are some of the main components of uh, food inflation uh, and here if we look at uh, the main uh, eye catching headline is of course the tomato prices that of have uh, skyrocketed yeah. uh, but interestingly when we look at the year on year change which is what yes. Uh, normally used to compare inflation and that is what is looked at the by the uh, 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 the mpc also when they decide the policy rate mm -hmm. there we see that vegetable prices are still in the contractionary zone meaning they are lower this year than they were last year yeah lower this year that means lower in uh, june 2023 
uh, as compared to June 2022. Right. Though the pace of contraction has come down, that means the prices are hardening. Hmm. So the gap between the uh, the difference between the prices in May, sorry, June of 2022 and June of 2023, that difference has come down. But still, we are at a lower level as compared to June of uh, 2022. Right. So that is the yeah, and but that difference is uh, getting bridged very sharply within a month's okay, so time. That difference has uh, bridged sharply uh, for vegetables and within vegetables one of the key driver is tomato prices mm -hmm. where uh, again tomato prices are also if we look at year on year change it's still in contractionary zone uh, it's around 34 to 35 percent we are still lower right. as compared to the prices uh, in the corresponding month of last year so vegetable prices the, the the support that we got through vegetable prices because they were declining that support is now abating and therefore those are giving an upside pressure to uh, food inflation so while which is pushing overall inflation which now. is pushing overall inflation mm -hmm. so in a nutshell vegetable prices though they are in contractionary zone that pace of contraction has become lower that means it is inching towards the positive uh, zone right uh, so that is one cereals now in cereals uh, if we just look at the year on year chain they remain elevated at around 12.7 percent wow which is which was in may as well as in june so we might think that cereal uh, inflation has not increased because it's it was in may also 12.7 but and in june also in, it is 12.7 uh, but what is also insightful is to look at month on month change yeah. uh, just look at the index numbers of cereals uh, cereal cpi mm -hmm. and there we see that you know for the past 3 months cereal cpi was coming down it mm -hmm. was uh, easing and in june it has reversed that declining trend and now we see that cereals have cereal cpi has also increased so while in year on year change we don't see fluctuation but in month on month change there is there, there has is. been an uptick uh, and that is now contributing Contributed by rice. Till now, we've it talked about uh, we've talked about wheat. You know, right. we, wheat was the main driving uh, factor behind the elevated uh, cereal inflation. But now it is uh, it, uh, rice has become the new wheat, and it's because mm. of the uh, increase in rice prices. We have uh, seen a sharp jump in rice prices over the last couple of weeks, which is also reflected in the Department of Consumer Affairs data, which is released right. by the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, which gives us uh, you know daily as well as weekly retail and wholesale uh, uh, prices of some 22 essential commodities. Mm -hmm. And there we see that the while wheat prices are still elevated, but they are stable. They were stable in June. Yes. Whereas the uh, rice prices have seen a jump. So that is something that needs to be looked into uh, because we have seen that the government has uh, recently raised the minimum support price of rice, mm -hmm. uh, which could play a role in rice inflation if the sowing does not pick up. Because in June, right. sowing was a problem. Kharif sowing was a problem because the monsoon was erratic. It was uneven. So we need to see how this uh, plays out in the month of July and August, those are the two uh, critical months. Why this is also important is because we are one of the main exporters of rice. So anything that happens here right. will have a uh, bearing on international prices of rice as well because we are exporting 40% of the overall supply of rice. So whatever we do here, if we impose some uh, restrictions on exports, if we raise MSPs, all these will have a bearing on international uh, prices of rice as well. So that is on the cereals uh, front. Spices, though they have a very small weight, right. spices are... Uh, the year-on-year -year spice inflation is more than 19%. Wow. And it is driven by, again, two items. One is jeera and dry chili. So the rest of the items have shown a uh, moderation. It is jeera that has uh, driven. So there are some, you know, th in some cases, there is a change in, in the drivers mm -hmm. of uh, uh, inflation. In some cases, it's becoming more concentrated that, you know, one or two right. items are driving uh, the overall uh, inflation. Milk continues to remain in, uh, elevated at uh, 8%. Vegetables, we've talked about. Cereals, we've talked about. Uh, but another is the pulses. Pulses right. have also jumped. Uh, they were till now, pulses inflation was in single digit. Now it's also crossed 10% mark in, uh, in June. So again, within pulses, 
the two uh, most consumed dals uh, arar and urad dal have mm -hmm. contributed to the surge in prices so what we are seeing here is that within food inflation excluding one component which is the oil and fat or the edible oils right. category which had shot up during the russia ukraine war uh, and that time we were seeing uh, escalating prices of uh, oil and fat mm -hmm. uh, leaving aside that component we see most of the other uh, components of food inflation have uh, seen a uh, a jump and right. where it was in the contraction like in vegetable the contraction has eased right so the question we had posed to you before the uh, episode so that we could get your own questions was how does this affect you but there you go it affects your kitchen in almost every way you have your rice getting more expensive you have your favorite dals getting more expensive you have your spices that are used in your tadka getting more expensive and your veggies of course have been expensive and they're remaining expensive so that's one big way about how the latest inflation data is affecting you but now what is the outlook for july yeah so the outlook for july we you know there are combination of factors one one more uh, most effective ways to look at the retail prices that we get from the uh, ministry of consumer affairs mm -hmm. and there also we see that the prices have uh, risen even more than in june Okay, so we have data till uh, 11th right. of July uh, and we have seen that most of the prices of out of these 22 commodities that are tracked by the Department of Consumer Affairs that are the essential commodity that includes uh, pulses, that includes mm -hmm. rice wheat, that includes top which is uh, tomato, onion and potato. potato, it includes some spices. So out of the 22 commodities, 15 commodities, we see that prices have risen from the week ended July 1 to the week ended July 8. So if we just compare uh, <clears throat> the last week of June with the first week of July, we see that prices have increased. So uh, if we just go by some early indication, we, sh we see that the prices, particularly of tomatoes, you know, the quantum of increase has accentuated in July in, in the, in the, in the uh, first 10, 11 days. So that should have a bearing on uh, food inflation. So we should see at least in quarter two, which is July, August, September also, we should see food inflation remaining elevated and then there has there will be a sharp uh, slowdown again with the onset of the uh, winter crop. So, I see. Right. Uh, primarily, what happens is that there are some seasonal factors at play, which which are always at play every year, but this time it has been amplified due to weather related disruption. Hmm. It has been amplified due to uh, unseasonal rain not uh, uneven rains and then uh, uh, transport uh, disrupting the supply of uh, right. perishable commodities from one state to other so that has the combination of these factors have resulted in uh, food inflation uh, picking up there was a cyclone also that affected yeah, the, yeah. the so, area yeah so in addition to you know the base effect getting less favorable which mm -hmm. which was to happen uh, in june and then uh, seasonal pickup which mainly impacts vegetable prices but why we are seeing a pickup in flaring of uh, cereal prices are also because of these uh, unseasonal uh, weather conditions that have impacted sowing that have also impacted prices of uh, pulses so at this point in time, the policy intervention by the government are going to play an important uh, role. Right. Uh, what M what MSPs they are fixing, uh, whether they are encouraging the uh, sowing of such commodities by you know incentivizing farmers through higher procurement, which they have already announced for uh, pulses. All these things will uh, also you know releasing import curbs, allowing uh, yeah. us to import. All these things will help in augmenting the supply and therefore uh, restricting the price. So it's mostly the fiscal intervention that would matter more. Right. And now because a lot of the, the reason for this uh, food inflation is because of unseasonal rains, right. a cyclone in some areas of the country, uh, transport is getting disrupted. Is there a lot of regional variation in the inflation yeah. that's happening or is it is the uniformity of India's markets kind of playing its part? No, there is a lot of heterogeneity if we look at the state's inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, and here again, if we look at the inflation data for 22 major states, because that is also announced when we have the All India 
uh, inflation level. We also right. get data for the uh, states. So we see that, uh, you know, uh, around 10 states out of 22 major states uh, have reported inflation higher than the All India level. The All India level is 4.8%. So 10 states have reported more than that uh, uh, level of inflation. Okay. And within that, there are four states which are more problematic because they have reported inflation of more than 6%, which Ouch. is the upper the threshold. Upper, yeah. uh, and within which, surprisingly, till now, we have always seen Bihar as a state which has a low inflation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this time around, the four states include Bihar uh, as I one see. of the states which has uh, reported inflation of uh, above uh, uh, 6%. The other three states are uh, Haryana, Tamil Nadu and Uttarakhand. So these mm -hmm. are the four states that have inflation of more than uh, 6%. Six. And in most of the states, the driver has been food inflation. Okay. And in fact, in Bihar, Bihar features as a state having the maximum food inflation across all the states. Mm. So, in uh, Bihar, food inflation is uh, more than 7%, uh, uh, which is higher than almost all the states. You know, if we see, we have uh, plotted the state's inflation on a map, uh, on India's map, and mm. there we see that, you know, food inflation is mostly in the bracket of 4 to 5%. Right. Uh, and in some states, it is more than uh, uh, 5 to 6%. But Bihar features as a state which has infl food inflation of more than 7%. Uh, and that is again driven by cereals. Because uh, right. if you see uh, in Bihar, it's mostly rural uh, CPI has a higher weight. Rural yeah. Bihar has a higher weight. And there the consumption pattern is more uh, uh, driven towards uh, cereal, towards vegetables, towards spices. So these are the items that have uh, resulted in higher uh, inflation in uh, Bihar. I see. So that is uh, the picture emerging from the state's inflation. Right. So now, okay, so we have gone in depth into India. Yeah. Uh, let's briefly at least uh, talk about what's happening in the US. Their inflation is coming down. Yes. So what is what is happening there? So US is the US inflation has uh, come down mostly due to decline in food prices. Like here oh, we wow. are seeing <laughs> an increase in uh, inflation due to food prices. It is the moderation there uh, of food prices. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, you know, what matters is also the weights and in fact today course, also yeah. there's a lot of discussion around uh, why cpi might be outdated because the weights matter a lot and we are giving undue emphasis on cereal mm -hmm. in our uh, weighing pattern but there it's not the food the weighing pattern is such that it's not governed so much by food there uh, 60 to 70 percent of the cpi weight is uh, contributed by shelter by housing prices. I see. So if the housing prices remain elevated, the overall uh, CPI tends to remain elevated or it does not decline measurably by that uh, extent. So in uh, US, it's the uh, shelter prices that has uh, resulted in the prices uh, remaining elevated. At least the core CPI has remained uh, elevated, but the overall CPI has come down because the food prices have uh, come I down. See. Also, interestingly, we uh, saw during COVID time, the prices of uh, used cars and vehicles were very high mm -hmm. in the US. Now those prices have uh, come down. So okay. dynamically, the composition of US inflation uh, has changed and that is resulting in a uh, moderation. Right. Okay. And uh, so now we have a question from the audience. It It's about something that you had also mentioned with, you had mentioned it in the context of rice where yes. we are an exporter of rice right. and so that affects the hmm. world market. So inflation in rice will affect right. the world market. Yes. But the question is particularly to do with India and the US okay. where we have a trade surplus with them if you count in services yes. as yes. well. Yes. 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 So does inflation here affect inflation there? Is the so, uh, you know, this depends on a number of factors, but mostly what is important is to see that whatever we are exporting, are we the price setters or are we the price takers of those right. uh, commodities? Mm. Are we the only uh, suppliers of those commodities in the international market? Do we have the pricing power to, uh, you know, fix the prices at such a high level that uh, because there are no other players, the US would have to buy and therefore right. the so-called inflation will be exported from India to the US. Yeah. But right now, as we've discussed the composition of uh, inflation in India, it's mostly food driven right. and therefore uh, the uh, idea about India's inflation being exported to the US 
does not arise so much in our context because even if we look at the export composition we've talked about earlier we are mostly services uh, yes. exporting uh, exporter to the us and why we are exporting because we are low cost we have low cost skilled labor that's the advantage and that's the reason why we are able to uh, have a trade surplus with the uh, us so uh, those are some of the reasons so the the composition of inflation is important and whether what position we have in the international market so like in the context of rice yes we are the price setter yeah, right. uh, in the context of sugar also we are the price setters whatever we do here uh, in, in the context of rice wheat will impact international prices mm. and therefore when we did uh, impose uh, uh, trade bans uh, last year uh, we, were, exports, uh, we were yeah. told we were uh, uh, exhorted by international organizations to ease those curbs so that other countries can get the uh, commodities but we wanted to first uh, ensure that there are adequate domestic supplies so yes. all the the nature of what we are trading is extremely important to answer these uh, questions of whether we are able to export inflation or not right and uh, so there's also a question on the potential india us trade deal uh, a free trade agreement potentially and the question is will this affect inflation in both the countries because Potentially, there will be lower taxes on yeah. what we are trading with yeah, each other. That will definitely impact because then that will help in uh, uh, lowering import duties and it will help in lowering our imports that could uh, lead to rupee getting appreciated. And when the rupee gets appreciated, the prices of our commodities comes down and that right. will help in easing inflation. Uh, but at this point in time, again, all these things are still in uh, progress. We've talked about earlier the ICET the initiative of uh, critical and emerging yeah, technologies correct. in one of our previous uh, discussions so what we are exporting is extremely important yes. the ipef we have not signed into the trade uh, deal yeah, as yet the then one of the uh, pillars uh, so unless we do that we are not uh, we are not sure about how uh, this uh, uh, this channel will pan out uh, will have an uh, impact or on the inflation outcomes that we will not be able to know but theoretically if we have a more free trade uh, agreement, we have unhindered access to uh, goods and services that is always a positive for uh, inflation control. Right. And so now we have two questions which I'm going to uh, club together because they both deal with uh, the US and the West. Where one is saying the US, all of this talk about their debt ceiling, yeah. the, the person asking the question says that that's actually a sham because each time they approach the debt ceiling, they will raise it, which yeah. means that more money is going to be printed, yeah. which will then uh, pump up inflation. Mm -hmm. So is the US Fed going about things the wrong way in that? Is it setting very unrealistic targets for inflation? Uh, that's one question. And the second was that during the pandemic, a lot of Western countries printed a lot of money to give to all of their people, which led to inflation but they're not seeing too much growth happening right yeah. now. So where did all of this money go? Yeah, so in case of US debt ceiling, this time what they have done is that they have uh, suspended the debt ceiling. They have not extended this. Right. So uh, this time the agreement between the Republicans and Democrats is that the debt ceiling has been suspended for the next two years. Mm -hmm. uh, and in uh, lieu of that, the uh, Democrats have uh, get, uh, yielded to a lot of demands of the Republicans, which right. is that they are going to do a lot of spending cuts. So overall what will be the outcome it, normally the outcome would have been as rightly pointed out that because there is unhindered access now there is no debt ceiling so you can uh, print as much money leading to more inflationary pressures but this time uh, that conclusion or that outcome may not play out in a very direct manner right. because uh, this uh, agreement has been reached on the back of several other agreements between the Democrats and Republic, which Republicans, which mainly relate to curbing of expenditures. So a lot I of, uh, you know, defense expenditure is on, but a lot of non-defense discretionary spending has been curbed. Mm. Uh, so overall, the impact on budgetary deficit, uh, it's not very clear that it will 
lead to a ballooning of budgetary deficit because there is no uh, debt ceiling. It's not that way because though the debt ceiling has been suspended for the next two years, but this has been uh, achieved because of uh, agreement on various spending cuts. I see. Uh, right. So that is uh, one. And the other thing is, at what rate they are able to borrow so you know mm -hmm. we have to also look at what's happening to the bond yields the us uh, two year bond yields and the us 10 year bond yields and what we have seen over the last two months since the signing of this deal we don't see a very explosive uh, increase in the bond yields so I see. it's not that the cost of uh, borrowing for the us has escalated uh, widely and therefore the budgetary deficit has exploded yeah that's one and right. on the second uh, question which is on the pandemic and, and how, where did the money go where did the money go so it was mainly uh, it was uh, it has resulted in a consumption boom the the money was given to people to spend and that is what we have seen the entire episode of inflation that has played out mm -hmm. uh, in the US since uh, 2021 was mainly due to the expansionary fiscal policy it was right. not that these this money went into capex or this many money went into some growth oriented infrastructure structure this uh, went into the pockets of people and it resulted in uh, increase in consumption demand right. and because the supply was not that adequate it has resulted in increase in uh, inflation and that is still the the implication of that policy is still being seen if you look at the labor market because you know even though inflation has eased the US labor market still remains very strong their wages are quite high unemployment is low Right. Uh, U.S. non-farm payroll employment, which is an indicator of uh, employment situation mm -hmm. in the country, is still very tight. So it is all an outcome of the the uh, expansionary fiscal policy, uh, putting more money into the hands of people, uh, giving a boost to demand when the supply was constrained due to a number of international factors right. uh, that resulted in uh, the surge in inflation that we saw to eight to nine percent and that is now getting also reflected over the last couple of months in terms of uh, labor market tightness right so there you go i mean the the picture in india and the us is very different yeah. uh, inflation in india has risen significantly in the last month driven largely by food inflation and the food inflation has been across almost all groups vegetables cereals spices and pulses everything in your kitchen except for the oil you use to cook with has gotten more expensive uh, which is not great news what is even worse is that the data shows that this is likely to continue into july as well so the relief from high food prices might be a little delayed uh, we won't see it in the very next month it might come a few months down the line in the us inflation has been uh, falling or inflation fell it's now at a two-year low and the reason it fell is because of cooling food prices over there so food prices over there have been falling which is quite notable given what's happening in india uh, but Overall, their inflation as well is still above target and ours, of course, is above our own target, the RBI's target. So things are not quite where they should be, but we're going to have to wait and see because there's a lot of seasonal factors. We're going to have to wait and see how it plays out over the next few months. Uh, on that note, that's all from us. Thank you so much for watching. But before you go, I have an appeal to make before you, which is to please, please subscribe to The Print. It allows us to do the groundbreaking research that we do, and it allows us to send our reporters on the ground to bring you stories that nobody else does. It allows us to do discussions like this. And apart from that, it gets you several benefits. One is that you get priority passes to our exclusive webinars that our editors and reporters do with experts across sectors. It also allows you to write in to us in our your turn section. You can write for us and we'll publish it as an article. And finally, and this is not least, you get access to our exclusive newsletters that come straight from our editors. We all write about the news of the day and we send it straight to your inboxes. So please do subscribe. The link is in the description of this video. And thank you so much for watching.